Okay, Impact Wrestling Review. A lot of things to say about this show. Now, I did watch Emergence from last Friday, so I am up to date on that. Took me a few days to do it, but I did watch Emergence, and it was a um, pretty good show. Not bad at all. But um, what does really happen next after Emergence now, which I guess is Victory Road, whatever the next Impact Plus show, I believe that is the next one, you know, Victory Road and whatnot. So with Victory Road coming up uh, at some point in time, what will they have? And whatnot. But Impact tonight, though, other than the video package that they played from Emergence last Friday, we do kick off the show with Chris Saban versus Sammy Callahan. Um, uh, very good match to kick off the show. Um, obviously, they did show tension between both Callahan and Saban last week when they were a team together and during the Fatal 4-Way at Emergence and whatnot, which um, none of them did not win, but still a pretty good match. Um, Saban was able to get the clean win, though, after kicking out of... Callahan's um, power driver's finisher and whatnot. Um, Saban tried to roll him up then after, but he ended up hitting the cradle shock for the win. So yeah, Chris Saban did get the win over Callahan here. Moose came out then and attacked um, both Saban and Callahan, hit him with a spear. He got a chair until uh, he picked up Sammy Callahan's bat. He was going to use it, but um, next thing you know, Eddie Edwards got in the ring and ended up clearing Moose up from out of there. Um, I guess helping Callahan then, which, you know, they kind of been trying to play it off is... You know, are Callahan and Eddie Edwards working together again? Is this some type of alliance going on? Even though they said they don't want to and whatnot, mostly uh, Eddie Edwards, what is the story behind that now? We all know about the whole baseball back to the eye thing in their feud in the past. But what is going to happen um, this time with, excuse me, what is going to happen this time with both of these two? Taylor Wilde talked about uh, her match tonight after being a whole three-on-one thing at Emergence. She decided to challenge all the influence of, Tennille Dash with Madison Rain and um, Caleb Conley in a three-on-one match. Why do that? I don't know. But she wants to take them all on and said, let's get wild in after that. Um, Eddie Edwards was in the back until um, Sammy Callahan showed up. You know what I'm saying? Who's going to thank who? And Eddie said, hey, man, we're even now. I don't need to help you anymore, okay? We're done. I return the favor. But um, Callahan says, oh, wait, no hug. So we're going to see what still goes on with that. Uh, Mickey James came out. Mickey James came out to promote the NWA Empower show, which is going to be over the weekend. I will probably check out that show and the NWA 73 show coming up. Uh, Mickey James basically talked about how her, Medusa, and Jazz are producing this historic pay per view and whatnot, and talked about, you know, thanking everybody in the Impact Zone for all the support for this pay per view. Um, Mickey James even talked about. Deanna Perrazzo and Melina, which you have a video package for both of them, until Deanna Perrazzo and Matthew Red. Revolt came out then. Um, Deanna, the M the Knockouts, and AAA Reina de Reina's champion uh, holding both titles. Deanna basically says, you know, I wonder how it feels to have your spotlight actually stolen now. And I understand you want to create buzz for this Empower pay-per-view and whatnot. And it's it is, it's a it's event. It's a big event. You know, it's historic. It's ran by a woman. And uh, Deanna says, why she's truthful, Mickey is dishonest and whatnot. Because it could be, you know, because, you know, Mickey, you're making this match and everything, but... Um, you know, I've already beaten um, Melina at Emergence, but Mickey says, well, you didn't beat her. That was um, Matthew here that beat uh, Melina. Uh, Mickey basically said the difference between Emergence and Empower is that uh, Red Wolf here won't be able to help you, okay? You're going to be going in on your own that Melina is unpredictable. But um, Deanna says, we don't have to wait till Saturday with Melina. I could just come out here and kick your ass right now, which um, Deanna tried to attack Mickey James then. Um, Red Wolf tried to help. Um Melina ended up coming out, helping in, and then Trey Miguel came out, basically clearing the ring as the bases, you know, cleared out the heels then. So at least they've done enough hype to build up this Empower show for NWA uh, over the weekend and whatnot. So we'll see what goes on with that. But um, yeah, Deanna and Melina at Empower this Saturday, which I did have a lot of ads for that in the NWA 73 show coming up. Uh, Brian Myers, uh, another How to Become a Professional Wrestler, the most professional uh, wrestler, um, skit him and Sam Beal, talking about we're gonna cut a t-shirt, make you look serious, make you look tough, but, uh, Sam Beal, I thought you were gonna talk how to react after taking a loss for the world title, but Brian says, listen, you know, I may have lost to, uh, Christian at Emergence, but this is not over, uh, next thing they cut up a t-shirt, you know, kind of like Hulk Hogan and whatnot, just to look serious out there, even cutting the sleeves, you know, put a headband on, and, um, you know, uh, Myers basically said that the sleeve becomes a free headman and everything. And Brian, um, you know, asked, um, what, you know, it's missing. 
Sam and say he's the world title. And then Brian got a pissed off. He says, you know, it's time for an open casting call. So I guess they're going to go cast some people. Maybe some recruits for this whole professional thing Myers is doing. A uh, new Bullet Club member and a little bit of a change to the theme song. Chris Bay went against Dave Finley. I guess he took out Juice Robinson last week. But a very good match um, between Chris Bay and Finley. Um, Chris Bay getting the win with the uh, roll of leverage on the ropes. Um... And whatnot. I'm still waiting to see this guy. What he's. I want to see him show up in New Japan. I know he's been on New Japan Strong before, but I actually want to see him on New Japan with the rest of the Bullet Club members now. Whenever that will be on, like you know, New Japan World. Whenever that's going to happen, I don't know when, but um, I do want to at least see Chris Bay interact with the other Bullet Club members now since he is in the Bullet Club. So we'll see what goes on with that. Um, Mac and Swan were cutting a promo on the Good Brothers saying that they didn't take the loss at Emergence and they challenged him to a non-title match later in the show. Um, Josh Alexander challenged any X X division champion next week in an open challenge. Christian Cage came out. Um, Christian got on the microphone, talked about how he would pin Myers back in Emergence and that he did and that Ace Austin is the next challenge. Someone in the crowd said Ace sucks, and he says, you know, that, you know, at least he's pretty good to be number one contender, but, you know, I was going to take him seriously, but then he laughed. I was like, yeah, he's not taking his belt away from me, okay? I'm not taking this guy seriously. Tommy Dreamer came out then and um, talked about, you know, just kind of just say hello, but Christian said, you know, the question is this, Tommy, what's, what's up with your hair right now? But Dreamer says, you know, he's totally against the whole um, Callus and Omega thing, and he didn't like them, how they were doing business over here. But Christian uh, saying that he does care about this business, that this man was retired for seven years. And it was a sad time. He even didn't get a chance to say goodbye. But, you know, you came back, uh, you found the fountain of youth, and now you're wrestling for the right reasons or whatnot. And that uh, no matter where you perform, uh, you know, I'm proud to call you my friend and coworker and peer and whatnot. As uh, Dreamer says, thank you for representing this company and the champion that you should Um Dreamer said, you know, I do want him one more match against you, though. And I haven't earned that title match yet, but you talk about how you can outwork everybody. I'm going to do that, too. Ace Austin came out then and basically saying, you know, I'm going to make history of Victory Road. I'm going to be the youngest man at 24 years old to win the um, world title. Um, Ace basically went on uh, to say that Dreamer, I could beat Dreamer on his best day. And he will never be world champion again. And Christian, your, your schedule's pretty heavy. You know, you're on AEW, you're on Impact. You traveled up and down the road like the old days. But after Victory Road, you're gonna be uh, your schedule's gonna be a little bit lighter, and your bag's gonna be a little bit lighter because the inevitable is coming. But Christian said, you know, you got high goals, but you know, if you want some respect around here, maybe you need to be um, taller instead of standing on your tippy toes to get to see over the top rope and whatnot. As next thing you know, it ended up being a brawl then, which Christian and Dreamer ended up throwing him out of the ring then after that. Um... Next thing you know, they were interviewing the back with Ace and uh, Fulton as Scott Demore showed up there and said, you know, um, you're going to get your match and Ace, uh, you're going to be facing Dreamer. If Dreamer beats you, then it'll be a triple threat match at Victory Road. I don't know why we need to see Tommy Dreamer in another world title match. I never understood that months ago when they put him against Rich Swan for the world title. I know it was his birthday, which is funny me and him have the same birthday, Tommy Dreamer, but um, I don't know why he was really getting a world title match at the same time. Kind of like what he is right now. Violent by Design... Uh, end up talking about Rhino blaming him for uh, costing the tag team titles in the rematch. And that Rhino needs to be washed into the holy waters of change because he is being infected with the sickness. Uh, Taylor Wilde went against the influence, which, once again, this is a three on one. And of course, Taylor Wilde ended up losing. Jordan Grace and Rachel Elrin came for the save. But why even um, take this match to begin with? I don't know. I, I, get, I, get, I guess to get all payback, but still, why? Brandy Lauren was interviewed. Um, I guess to talk about the Perazzo and Melina match coming up. But next thing you know, everything got all spooky as um, Kimberly and Sue Young, I guess, end up taking her out and killed her off of this show after making one other appearance. Yes, I know Brandy Lauren was in Impact a few years ago. Hell, she just got fired from NXT not that long ago. So don't you think you would kind of keep her around unless they're going to make her some undead zombie part of the group? I don't know. But, um,. I don't know, I keep hearing Brandy Lauren is that good, though, and whatnot. They just, they just haven't really done much with her, so... I don't know if she was just killed off this show, or maybe she's killed to become one of the zombies or whatnot. I'm not really sure, but we'll see. Um, next. What, what really happened next on this show? Um, TJ Perkins, I guess he came back on the pre-show. Tom Biden needs Petey's help, as Petey Williams said, you know, he's coming after Macklin... 
and uh, saying, y'all stay out of my way, you stay out of his. So that happened. Uh, Matt Cardona and Chelsea Greenman backstage talking about Rohit Raju and Mahabla Shira. Chelsea uh, talked about how Shira won't be the woman, but I have no problem smacking Shira around. And then I guess they made an intergender tag team match next week, so we'll see how that goes. Tasha Steeles and Savannah Evans and Tasha Steele's very cool hat um, were in the back talking about the loss and emergence. And that, it was by no way Jose's fault, but they came up saying, like, listen, man, I know I can make it up. How about this? We take care of Craig Steven Taurus next week. And that gives y'all an open uh, shot at the tag team titles. As Tasha said, all right, we'll see then. Um, in the main event, though, it was the Good Brothers versus Willie Mack and Rich Swan. Good match. Swan and Mack end up getting the win with a roll-up. But next thing you know, Gals and Anderson attacked both um, both Swan and Mack. Hit them with magic killers. Throwing their heads through chairs. And even powerbombing Mack through a table and whatnot. Killing this guy. So, um... Basically making the Good Brothers look strong here and killing both of them. Uh, sometimes I wonder how they were even close to the tag team titles to begin with. Yeah, you know, I look at Rich Swan sometimes and I kind of think to myself, man, this guy really lost the world title and didn't, did not really think about going back to it. And couldn't he be able to challenge back more now since Omega's not the champion anymore? Because I thought it was kind of odd that this guy lost and then just went back to being happy-go-lucky and act like he never lost and just went to the tag team division. I thought that didn't make a lot of sense because... Think he'd have some redemption or be really pissed off or depressed or some type of storyline. So, no, no, it's just business as usual. I'm just going to smile along and dance and not going to do a thing about it. So, it kind of tells me something about Rich Swan right there. But, uh, yeah, as for this episode of Impact, not a bad show and whatnot. Um, pretty good. So, at least they're building up Victory Roll right now and we'll see how that goes. But, um, it was not a bad show. So, um, like I said, Christian still be on Impact. Really helps also, uh, like I said, playing flashbacks of people that never watched Christian back then, you know, back in that 05 era, uh, at least gives you history lesson than when he was the NWA World's Champion and whatnot. So, um, it does help that he is champion at the same time, though. But other than that, I'm done with this review for uh, Impact this week. Adia, see you guys later. Peace.